In this video, I am going to share with you the latest updates on Malaysia's 2025 budget and how it might affect the region's economy. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Iggy here, and I've been covering topics such as stocks, finance, CPF, and basically everything related to growing your wealth. The Investing Iguana is featured and ranked 8th in the 2023 Influential Tigers by Tiger Brokers, with over 800,000 reads. I've also covered over 500 videos and over 250,000 watch hours as of September 2024. I occasionally focus on topics related to the regional or world economy. Today, we're diving into Malaysia's 2025 budget announcement. This is big news for our neighbors, and it could have ripple effects on Singapore's economy too. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, who's also the finance minister, just dropped some major changes that'll shake things up next year. First off, Malaysia's planning to spend big in 2025. We're talking about a record 421 billion ringgit, or about 98 billion US dollars. That's a 3.3% increase from 2024. But here's the kicker, they're also aiming to shrink their budget deficit. They're targeting 3.8% of GDP, down from 4.3% this year. Now, how are they going to pull this off? Well, they're rolling out some new taxes and cutting subsidies. Let's break it down. On the tax front, Malaysia's casting a wider net. They're expanding their sales and services tax starting next May. This will now cover commercial services, non-essential goods, and even some premium imports like salmon and avocados. If you're into fancy foods, you might feel the pinch. But that's not all. They're also introducing a tax on dividend incomes above 100,000 ringgit. The rate? 2%. And for the big players, they're enforcing a global minimum tax from next year. Now, let's talk about sugar. If you've got a sweet tooth, brace yourself. Malaysia's hiking up excise duties on sugary drinks. They say it's to fight obesity and diabetes, but your wallet might feel lighter too. And here's a big one for the future, the carbon tax. It's coming for the iron, steel, and energy industries by 2026. This shows Malaysia's getting serious about climate change, which could be a trend we see more of in the region. But it's not all about new taxes. Malaysia's also cutting subsidies, particularly for fuel. Remember Ron 95? Well, the subsidy for that is getting reformed mid-2025. This is part of their plan to target subsidies more effectively, focusing on those who really need them. Now, you might be wondering, Iggy, what about the people? How are they going to cope with all these changes? Well, Anwar's got a plan for that too. They're raising the minimum wage from 1,500 to 1,700 ringgit per month starting February 2025. That's a decent bump that could help offset some of the new costs. Plus, they're increasing cash aid for low-income individuals. We're looking at 13 billion ringgit next year, up from 10 billion this year. That's going to help about 9 million people. And it's not just about giving money. Malaysia's also expanding tax relief for first-time homeowners, education, and health insurance premiums. So they're trying to balance the new taxes with some breaks for the average Joe. Now, let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. What does all this mean for Malaysia's economy? Well, they're optimistic. The government's forecasting growth between 4.5% and 5.5% for 2025. That's a pretty healthy outlook. Inflation? They're expecting it to stay manageable between 2% and 3.5%. That's a bit higher than this year, but still within a reasonable range. One thing that caught my eye is what they're doing with the money from Petronas, the state energy firm. They're keeping the dividend at 32 billion ringgit, same as this year. This tells me they're being cautious about relying too much on oil and gas revenue. So, what does all this mean for us here in Singapore? Well, a stronger Malaysian economy could be good news for us. They're one of our top trading partners, after all. If their economy grows, we might see more demand for our goods and services. But there's also the competition angle. With Malaysia making these big moves, especially in areas like carbon tax and minimum wage, we might need to stay on our toes to keep our competitive edge. And let's not forget about the potential ripple effects on regional trade. If Malaysia's new taxes affect the prices of goods, it could impact supply chains that run through Singapore. 
In conclusion, Malaysia's 2025 budget is a bold move. They're trying to balance growth with fiscal responsibility, which is no easy task. As investors and regional neighbors, we'll need to keep a close eye on how these changes play out. If you guys enjoyed this video, then you're going to love my analysis of the Singapore Straits Times Index, STI, hitting a 17-year high. In that video, I break down the factors driving this surge and what it means for investors in the context of regional developments like Malaysia's budget changes. It'll give you a great perspective on how Singapore's stock market is performing amidst the evolving Southeast Asian economic landscape.